Joining us now to talk about your health is Michael Rivas, clinical dietitian with the University of Maryland Medical Center. Sir, thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to talk about nutrition this time of year. I know it's something that a lot of people have questions about, so I'm happy to help. Well, let, let's start with what can go wrong. When we, we talk about holiday eating, big Thanksgiving dinner, uh, from your standpoint, what do you worry about? Uh, there's a couple of things. Is one, first and foremost, I mean, it's a day dedicated to eating, which means there's going to be a lot of instances of choice. What can we make? And also, it's a celebration. We want to leave the end of the day knowing it was an exciting day and something we were joyful for. But with a lot of food and trying to leave the day joyful, sometimes that can lead with too much food in our stomach, an upset stomach, and not leaving the day feeling the best. So definitely volume. And then, you know, there's a couple other things that could go into it, whether we're talking food safety or a number of other things. Well, let's start with the, the dietary standpoint. We'll talk about over drinking a little bit uh, yeah. <laughs> too coming up. But if, if somebody's actively dieting, either for weight loss Absolutely. or sports nutrition or some other purpose, can you take a holiday for a big holiday? Yeah, that is an excellent question. And I mean, I think it kind of goes back to the point of nutrition isn't always just about food in and energy and calories, these things. There is a celebration to it. So I do think it's important to take the holiday, but go into it with a sense of mindfulness, kind of know that, you know, there are things that you can do to set yourself up for success. And a lot of the food that's going to be on the Thanksgiving table is nutrient dense and healthy food. So you can have your holiday and keep it balanced as well. Does it make sense to um, sort of bank some calories by, you know, skip breakfast, skip lunch with the idea that uh, you're going to pig out at dinner. Do you like that idea or no? So I don't love that idea, but I think there is a piece of that that you can use really effectively. And that is one, when we're trying to bank calories, we're really letting our body sit there with the hormones that it has in place to kind of dictate hunger. And it keeps screaming, I need to eat, I need to eat, I need to eat. And then you get to the final meal and it's like, blow the doors down, let's go for it. So you can bank calories without saying just not eating. And what I like to think of that is, my breakfast in the morning needs to have a lot of fiber and some protein in it as well. I love to start with an omelet with vegetables and maybe some fruit on the side. And then typically in Thanksgiving, we're having snacks middle of the day and these kind of things. It's a great time to lean into some of the appetizers, having a lot of volume, but maybe not a lot of calories. So once again, doing some veggies with some kind of dip or having something in the middle of the day. So when we get to that meal, we can really enjoy it, but our body isn't screaming to eat which can kind of lead to that overeating. Well, let's focus on the, the traditional Thanksgiving dinner, which, as Absolutely. you mentioned, has some um, nutritionally dense elements to, yep. to that meal. You caught that. Great. Are there alternatives that, that you'd like people to maybe consider? So, yeah. I mean, I think right in the middle, you have your centerpiece of the turkey or whatever protein you've chosen. There's really not too much that you can change there. But when you start to look at the sides, we can really start to make some changes that do have some benefit. So, you know, for example, if you are all about the carbohydrates at the meal, that might be a point of having one that is maybe your favorite, like the mac and cheese. And usually people are making two. Maybe one is more of like a big sweet potato or something along those lines. And I know a lot of families will have green bean casserole or some kind of vegetable of some kind there. Maybe it's saying like, hey, you know, one is more of the casserole type and the other is, you know, we're just doing some roasted Brussels sprouts or some kind of roasted vegetable, one that really leans into that fiber side of things. I, I love the Thanksgiving meal, but but also find for, for some reason that I, I tend not to go back for seconds. I don't know yeah. why that is. I mean, maybe it's the knowledge that there's a pie waiting for me. Or something. <laughs> I was going to say probably that. There, there's some meals where I can't help myself but but have seconds. It tends to be like Chinese food with you know a lot yeah. of fat, a lot of a lot of salt. You get hooked on it. Thanksgiving dinner, I sort of like the meal. I mean, on, on the list of evils out there, yeah. um, the Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving dinner. How how does that rate for you? I mean, if you really break it down, and as I said, like there is a lot of nutrient dense foods in this meal. Like you are leaning into vegetables. You're leading into mostly like potatoes and these kind of carbohydrates that do have a little bit of fiber as well as some protein. And I think also there is a, a satisfaction of it. A lot of times when we go back for seconds, it's because 
maybe that first part of the meal didn't do it first, didn't hit that more psychological aspect of eating, whereas Thanksgiving, we really get excited. There's that buildup. That's, there's that, ooh, my plate in front of me. And I think that can kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, scratch that itch of, oh, this was a very satisfying meal. But I do agree probably a little bit behind it is the, you know, there's something exciting after dinner. And we don't always allow ourselves that as well. Let's talk about the alcohol part of it. Yeah. Uh, most people, there's a lot of sports on TV, um, you know, depending on the, the table situation, there may be some wine. People are probably going to have more to drink than they will on a normal Thursday. Just talk yeah. about the nutrition side of that, which we, we don't often think about. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us will go through our day and our life thinking, you know, liquids, how much energy can they really have? We kind of know that food more so has that. And, you know, alcohol, just like all other parts of nutrition, does have calories. And when we're looking at, you know, wine, for example, there might be some sugar in there. Beer does have some marginal aspect of carbohydrate. But realistically speaking, it is probably going to be if we start having more mixed drinks of some kind, we're adding in a lot of extra energy to it. And then not only is it the calories in the vessel itself, but we've also got to keep in mind Alcohol does interfere with our body's ability to break down fat and to kind of dictate how hungry it is. So also the alcohol can have that effect of maybe not realizing we're as full as we are. So paying attention to that of, okay, I may allow myself to have something to drink, but I do have to be cognizant of my choices after as well. And that's really where, as we talked about before, that fiber and protein goal can really help kind of set the tone for that as well. Any tips on, on saying no, either to yeah. um, you're at an event and uh, you keep getting offered stuff and whether it's an alcoholic drink or it's uh, your third, third dessert or something, how politely, how do you decline? Yeah, that's not an easy thing to do for any of us. You know, definitely with the holiday, there is that societal pressure to enjoy everything or, you know, your loved one spent a lot of time making something. You don't want to be the one to say, I, I can't. But, you know, I think there's always ways to do it where we can say, I've had such a wonderful meal and such a wonderful day, like anymore, and I'm not going to enjoy it as much. Or I would love to maybe take some home with me. You know, there's ways to show appreciation without having it right in that moment. And, you know, it's a day of thanks. And I think, you know, most of us want to be told we did a great job, especially the cook. So there are exactly, as I said, hey, I'm excited to have this tomorrow. I can't wait for it or something along those lines. That's great advice. I mean, but, but say somebody um, overindulges, they yeah. fall off the wagon a little bit. How do you deal the next day uh, with the, you know, the, the guilt of that and the feeling that you, you, you know, you messed up what you've been working on so hard and, and get back on the wagon, so to speak? Yeah. You know, we've got to put nutrition at its simplest parts, which is it is energy. That means going into that next day, we have a surplus of energy and maybe there is something we can go do with that. You know, maybe it's a beautiful morning and we take our dog or our loved ones and let's go for a walk. Or, you know, maybe it's a wonderful day to go to that park we've been meaning to, especially if we have the day off work. And, you know, if we do have to go to work that next day, you know, we say, all right, I'm going to reset. I'm going to have a breakfast that I know is something that is health forward and make that time for some kind of movement or some board games or something along those lines later in that day. Holidays, of course, can, can often be stressful for a lot yeah. of people. Um, talk about the, the concept of stress eating, which yeah. is maybe focused on all different kinds of stress, workplace stress, what, whatever's going on in your life. And it, it makes the, the bag of chips irresistible somehow, right? I mean, how, yeah. how do you deal with that? That's very challenging. And, you know, especially with stress eating, it is kind of a culprit of our brain has a lot of things going on it. And the brain is one of the major organs that requires a lot of energy. So in sometimes it is true, a need for energy, but often it is us trying to find something that solves the stress without solving the stress. So in that, I like to try and take maybe that thought and turn it into something else. Say, you know what? I've already eaten my dinner. Let's go and do something productive, something else that excites me. Maybe it is, hey, let's take five minutes, you know, read a book, go for a walk, turn that stress into something that we're going to enjoy. And usually we notice that when we take our mind off the stress, it actually starts to help relieve it and it doesn't come back as easy as well. So 
in those stressful moments, I say, find something that you really want to do that isn't centered around maybe the table or eating at that point. Well, what is the concept of um, comfort foods yeah. mean to a dietitian? Is that like the, the flip side of stress eating? What you're looking <laughs> for is comfort foods? So, yeah, you're looking for those foods that either have, you know, some level of nostalgia, some personal enjoyment, or often something that, you know, we know we can have a lot of and, you know, could fill that void. So comfort foods also, too, we might be looking for something warm. Often a warm beverage can really solve, you know, that middle ground. And, you know, we're getting to that colder time of year where these things can be something we really enjoy and look forward to. So, you know, I would say maybe in comfort food, a lot of the Thanksgiving meal will be that. So maybe we find like a warm beverage to end the day of some kind. Um, when when you're not talking about holiday eating, what what does a clinical dietitian focus on? What what's most yeah. of your uh, what what are most of your clients interested in? Absolutely, I mean the field of nutrition is such a diverse field. You know we have everything from weight management to you know sports and all these things, but specific eh, specific to the clinical setting. You know we are assessing patients in the hospital and checking for any malnutrition or disease states that have a nutritional relevance, such as chronic kidney disease, diabetes, and these kind of things, and ensuring A, you know, in our toughest moments in the hospital, we're being fed the energy that is going to help nourish and recover our body, really focused on that, you know, getting out of the hospital and getting back to quality of life. And then also making sure that, you know, if we can't take food by mouth, we are calculating what we can do in terms of tube feeds or parental nutrition, things to make sure that the body gets the energy when, is at, when, is, when it is at its sickest. Michael Rebus is a clinical dietitian with University of Maryland Medical Center. Michael, uh, happy holidays. Thanks for Happy holidays, us. everyone. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 